With all due apologies to Voltaire, if Ken Ham didn't exist, we'd have to invent him. I mean, I know we give him a lot of shit for the desperate effort to hide his pockmarked visage behind Mennonite mutton chops and all, but when I think about how much easier he makes my job, I feel like I should give him a big sloppy kiss. Or at least an eyeball lick. I mean, he's, he's like an all-you-can-eat buffet of institutionalized stupid. He allows me to answer virtually all of the what's-the-harm type questions I get from apathetic non-believers in six simple letters, two syllables, one name, Ken motherfucking Ham. Of course, as I'm sure you're aware, Ken Ham's proud testament to credulity finally had its grand opening last week. The city of Williamstown is now the proud owner of a 500-foot-long, 85-foot-wide, seven-story landlocked boat with all the buoyancy of the Greek economy. And for our international listeners, by the way, 500 feet, that's about 300 cubits. Now, we're going to talk more about the grand opening in the headline segment, but as I was researching this story, I kept being struck by the nesting doll of debate ammunition that he's handed us here. I mean, I constantly hear moderate voices on both sides of the theistic divide trying to deflate atheist arguments by pretending that the bad types of religion are some ignorable minority, right? I mean, the most common religious criticism of the four horsemen was that they were attacking some bygone notion of religion that nobody in the 21st century really believed anymore. No one in the United States, anyway. They'd laugh off atheist arguments with hand-waving dismissals that modern Christians aren't worshiping a bearded man on a throne. They don't believe in a literal Satan. They don't take the Noah's Ark story seriously. And how the fuck can we now be expected to take that argument seriously when Ken Ham's magic boat is taking up a football field in the half worth of our country? Over a hundred million dollars went into this delusional effort, which promises on its website to teach visitors what Noah's family must have really felt like during the flood. And meanwhile, I don't even see anybody raising money for the It's Just a Book of Allegories theme park. Well, that's only one of the many locks I can jiggle this skeleton key of stupidity into. When you see tens of millions of dollars invested in a park that primarily exists to convince children that young earth creationism is legitimate science, who the fuck can even formulate the words, what's the harm? He's got animatronic dinosaurs and zip lines and plush animals for all the little kitties, all serving no purpose but to enrich his ministry at the cost of these children's intellects. Everything Ham does is directed at de-educating children so he won't have to work as hard when they're adults. I mean, look, this is no less insane than an entire theme park dedicated to teaching kids their multiplication tables incorrectly or convincing them that adverbs don't exist. But institutions dedicated to confusing children about verifiable facts are so commonplace in this country, we rarely stop to recognize how fucked up it is. Until, of course, somebody draws attention to it with a hundred million dollar boat that can't swim. I mean, how much would you pay for these kind of ready examples in a debate? But don't answer yet, because with Ken Ham, you also get verification of all the slippery slope shit we've been warning about. Just look at the fucking hiring practices here. Because he waved a magic wand and called this for-profit business a ministry, he gets to refuse employment to anybody that won't agree with him that the earth is younger than the oldest house in England. There's literally a maximum allowable intelligence to work for him, and in an area as impoverished as Williamstown, Kentucky, you can bet your ass a few educated atheists are Winston Zetamoring their way into a job. So yeah, there was a time when we had to point to the future's near horizon and say, if we keep going like this, you'll have to promise to agree with your employer's religion to get a job. But thanks to Ken Ham, we only need to point to Williamstown, Kentucky. I mean, that should be more than enough to terrify atheists, Jews, Muslims, and any of the hundreds of theological slices of Christianity that don't fit into answers in Genesis as literalism. And as if that's not enough, Ken Ham has also provided us with a treasure trove of evidence to dissuade the members of his own little franchise of Christianity. I mean, look at the fucking boat! You're telling me that human beings with fully fireable neurons are going to look at that behemoth and go, yeah, 900-year-old guy with his kids could have done that. You're telling me that the years it took Ken Ham to build this thing with modern construction equipment is going to convince people that this story is more likely to be true? They're looking at this thing and they're thinking about that wave from San Andreas, and believe me, they've seen San Andreas, and they're thinking, yeah, I can see how an unsteerable wooden vessel could ride out a few of those. But it even goes one layer deeper than that, because let's face it, if Ken Ham's acolytes had a thought like, doesn't look like something that big could float, they'd go to their pastor to exercise the devil from their thinking lung the next day. So even if not one single person looks at that thing and says, okay, yeah, that story's definitely bullshit, we still win, because the biblical just-so story they've elected to aggrandize with this park is a story, as the tri-state freethinkers put it, of genocide and incest. 
I mean, if you do take the story seriously, it's the single greatest act of murder and evil committed by any conscious being in the 6,000 year history of the universe. Unless, of course, you count the existence of hell. It's a story of depravity, unjustified rage, and cousin fucking. And here I thought the state of Kentucky was trying to move away from that image. So for just a second, I want to set aside the animosity and the insults and tell Ken Ham that we owe him a heartfelt debt of gratitude. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all the work that you do, Ken. When your religion dies, you'll have done more to kill it than I could ever hope to.